Just do what you have to do. I always do, Sam. I always do. The thing you have to understand is this. The Sam Fisher you knew is dead. America killed him, asked him to make one sacrifice too many, cross one line too far. A drunk driver killed him, some anonymous asshole who ran down his daughter and vanished. And she was the one thing in his life that humanized him. And his agency killed him. It set him up, turned him loose, and told him to pull the trigger on his best friend in a dirty New York City basement. Irving Lambert died by Sam's hand that day. And so did Sam. So he left. Left her at Echelon, left the life he knew. Left America and mom and apple pie, left it all behind. He hopped off the grid and went walkabout, looking for a reason to go on living. Eventually, he found it. He caught a whisper in the wind that maybe his daughter's death hadn't been an accident. He heard a name, and he found somewhere to go looking. A city all right. called Valletta. It's in Malta. Excuse me, sir. Yes? Phone call for you. Please accept these compliments of your call. Sam. Who is this? How'd you find me? Give me a little credit, Sam. Don't tell me you don't recognize my voice even after all this time. Grim, what do you want? To save your life. We can go from there. A team of armed men just entered the marketplace looking for you. They're closing in on your position. Unless you do exactly what I say, this will be a very short conversation. I'm not doing a damn thing until you tell me how you found me. We're third echelon. We've got an eye on everyone. Look up. You'll see it. I see it. Then I can take it back up to safe altitude, and you can get moving. You still haven't told me how you found me. Move. You've got multiple hostiles inbound on your position. And from where you're at, you're a sitting duck. Now get to that group of stalls in the market. There's a lot of cover for you there. Just like the old days, huh, Grim? Just like the old days, Sam. Are you carrying? Yeah, but I'd rather not risk a firefight when there are civilians around. That's very noble of you. But right now, what matters to me is getting you out of there in one piece. So get to that group of booths right now, or I can't help you, Sam. When it's light, you can't see into a place that's dark. But when it's dark, you can see what's around you much better. Really? Really. So if there's monsters or bad people around, you can see them. And if you're in the dark, they can't see you. I can't see you either. Can you please turn the light back on? Okay. Then how about this? There's one really cool thing I didn't show you yet. There is? Show me. Okay, here it is. When you're in the dark and your eyes get used to it, you can see all sorts of things around you really well. And then you can do stuff with them. Like what? Now take a look at your mobile. You can see it really well, right? If there were monsters standing underneath it, because I can see it, maybe I could make it fall on them and they'd go away. And it would fall on their heads and they wouldn't be bad anymore? That's my girl. Teddy, what was that? Daddy needs you to stay in bed now, okay? He's gonna shut the door and I'll be back real soon, all right? Okay, Daddy, I love you. What do you got, man? You got anything good? This place is shit. Yeah, you picked it, asshole. You said we'd get a couple of thou easy. I heard there was metals and shit we could fence in here. And the lady that lives here is hot. Maybe we could wait for her to come home. Take it out and trade. Now shit. you're talking. Oh. Sarah, baby, don't look. Sam? Sam?
Sam. What are you doing, Daddy? What, what are you doing? doing? Sam, talk to me. Don't tell him I told you. But I knew all along that's where Sam would be going. Anything dirty in Malta ran through that mansion. Coben's whole operation was based there, and he turned the place into a fortress. Which, to be fair, it pretty much was to start with. And that was before he filled the place with jumpy guys toting automatic weapons. But Sam knew Coben was in there. And that he might know something about what happened to his daughter. So, Sam was going in, no matter what. Fisher, I'd advise you to listen. She knows all sorts of things you'd be interested in. What took you so fucking long? Don't throw hands in the That's air! It, Fisher. Don't let me nice and easy! Man, this is Ghost Hawk 1. We've secured Panther and are ready to return to base. All right, Grim. You get this one. But if it's a setup, some of them. I'll be happy when we drop off Sleeping Beauty. So will Reed. I saw his people off by his chopper, ready to go. He's probably impatient. Look, Colonel Prentice, I got us here as fast as I could. Yes, you did, Oscar. Tom Reed's just not a patient man. Uh, Colonel, I don't mean to be pushy on this one, but I do need to talk to you about my pay. I was told Coburn was handling that. Well, yes, sir, but since there were these changes, you see, extra passengers with extra gear and a longer flight plan. Tell you what, Oscar. Take it up with Colonel Reed. He'll take care of you. It was clear someone wanted to talk to Sam. That's why they went to all the trouble of setting them up at Coburn's. That's why they tranked them and flew them back home. They needed him docile when they offloaded him at their private airstrip up in the Blue Ridge, because if they hadn't, he would have taken that place upon with his bare hands. He's awake. Fuel is it free, man. Colonel Prentice. Major Robertson, we don't, we don't have, time have time to chat. chat. Our, Our timetable time says your men need to move. Everything's operational, Director Reed. We start deployment at 900 hours this morning. Good, Good. Keep, keep things going on your end. I'm heading back to third echelon to prep things there. Oh, our people would be just fine. Never had any doubts. Now, gentlemen, if you'll excuse us, I need a minute with Miss Grimm's daughter here. There's a loose end that needs tying off. Of course, Major. Right. Fisher's all yours, Anna. You packaged him for us in Malta, you get to unwrap him here. Find out what he knows about the EMPs, how he knows it, and why he's been hunting our friend Mr. Coven. Might take a while, Tom. He's been trained to resist interrogation. I'm authorizing you to use whatever persuaders you need, chemical or otherwise. Get the answers, and dispose of them. Just don't be as messy this time. Well, I'll keep that in mind. Anything else? Just, Just get, get to, to it. it. And call me when you have something. I'll be at HQ. Listen to me. I'm working for President Caldwell as a mole inside third echelon. Reed's the new director, and he's working hand-in-hand -hand with our hosts here, a PMC called Black Arrow. They're running a pipeline for stolen Russian EMP tech through Malta. 
and Reed stonewalling any kind of investigation into it. Reed stonewalling the president. He's got serious political coverage from somewhere, and the president isn't getting anywhere through channels. We know they're in the final stages of prep for something very ugly, but what we don't know is what it is or where it's going down. Really? Then again, you seem more interested in field work these days. Stop it. I need you to do this. The second I make a move, my cover is blown. But you're on the outside now. You are free to act. I don't do this sort of thing anymore. Tell that to the men you killed in Malta. Now, if you don't make it look like you escaped and attacked me, I'm dead. So make it look good, Sam. Hit me. Do what you have to do. Grim, let me remind you I'm out of the game. You're not out. All it took was one hint about her. Only one hint about Sarah and you dove right back in. What do you know about her? I know she's alive. How's that for starters? You're lying. She's dead. Lambert told me she was dead, and I take his word over yours. <gasps> Do not lie to me about this, or I'll kill you. You understand me? I will kill you! Sam, I've been lying to you about this for years. Okay. I... Okay, that'll do. Good work. Shut up. Here. My car's just outside their security gate. It's a red T-208. I disabled the GPS locator chip so Third Echelon's birds can't find it. And take this snake cam. It's linked with this phone. The signal's encrypted. In case you get lonely. So I can set up a call with Sarah to prove to you that she's alive and unharmed. Now we need to get you out of here without them coming after you. C4 should help with that. There's some right outside. Get it and call me back. I don't get the gun. Just point it at the right people. Oh, I will. Victor Cost speaking. Vic, it's Sam. I'm in town and could use a little help. Uh, if you're asking for help, we better do this face to face. And what the hell's going on back there? I thought you'd recognize the sound. Remind you of anything? Yeah. I rank. Yo, Sam, how's your little girl? She's doing fine. I got a picture from her in the mail. I think her mom helped her draw. Nice. My kids don't draw me pictures or write or anything. They don't write because you can't read, man. <laughs> Clap it up. But when I get out of here... Hey, you're going to kindergarten. You know, I hear they got entrance exams at kindergarten now, Sam. I don't know if Vic's going to make it in. <laughs> Sam trusted me, because of what we'd been through together in the Gulf. That's why he called me after Third Echelon did their little number on him. He needed someone to watch his back. I was the only one who could. I got two for a ride out of here. Husky, this is Wolford Base. You are one lucky son of a bitch. 
We'll have a bird in the air as soon as we can pinpoint your location. Roger that, Wofford. We are at... We gotta move! We're not going anywhere. Hear that, Sam? We're getting out of here! Thanks for coming back for me, Nick. You don't leave a brother behind, Sam. You don't leave family. That op started a change in Sam. One that would take years to really show itself. Years of figuring out what that change meant. But Sam's deal with Grimm meant he needed intel on EMPs and Black Arrow right now. Sam never asked for the little things, which meant this was big. The other question was where to meet. We picked the National Mall, public space, lots of crowds for cover, open approaches. It made life tricky for the spotters. I could dodge him, and Sam, he could find them, and he did. There you are. Here, put this on. We don't have a lot of time. Those spotters had to have backup. So we'll go over to basics here, cover the rest by phone. Sounds good. Look in the bag, you'll find your favorite pistol. I didn't get you anything. Shut up, Sam, there's no time. You'll also find something I borrowed from a buddy over at DARPA. It's a portable EMP generator. Low intensity, short range. The bag's shielded so you can stash your gear in there, but uh, hit the trigger, you'll fry everything around you to use as juice. Nice. What else do you have for me? Uh, there's a file in the bag, but here's the short version. There's an R&D house called White Box, a DOD contractor that does work on EMP technology. So? So, six months ago, they suddenly contract out all their security to those assholes over at Black Arrow. Now, that's a breaking pattern for them. They don't do corporate security. And based on what you told me about them... There might be a connection. Bingo. It's slim, but you've gone fifth freedom based on less. All right. Time for you to go. And you ping me when you reach safe distance, and we'll talk more about White Box before you go in. Will do. Stay safe, Vic. My order? All those years you were lying to me. It was for the greater good, Sam. And I would do it again in a heartbeat, for the same reasons. Guess I never did know you. No, you didn't. And you still don't. When Sam came to me for help, I wasn't going to say no. He'd always been more the lone wolf type, and he needed a little reminder on the value of sticking your neck out. After the fun and games at the monument, Sam headed to White Box. The goons who bought the place had already gotten what they wanted out of it and were moving it off site. But he didn't care what they were taking out. He wanted to get in. Not that a double-walled EMP containment structure has a lot of back doors. He just needed one. Sam here. I'm looking at Robertson's system. Perfect. Can you get me a back door? Just like old times. You've got root access and a socket address. Thanks. I'm setting up a capture so I can download everything he's got. All of the EMP data is on there. A couple of analysts I trust are looking forward to seeing it. Okay, Sam. 
The link is active, and the pipe is full. So I'm done here. Not quite. I need you to babysit this from your end. If the connection goes, I can't re-establish it from here. So, nobody else gets their hands on this box. From what I'm seeing, that system could be used to shut down the site's connectivity. I'd be locked out and we'd be out of luck. Then I'd better get ready. Company's coming. How did Sam get on site at the Lincoln Memorial? Easy. Secret Service acting on orders from the President got him there. Why'd they do that? Oh, that's a little trickier. You see, the name Lucius Galliard got Grimm's attention. She knew he was a businessman Reed was working with. But Reed kept things compartmentalized, and that was one of the aspects of his operation Grimm had no access to. It pissed her off. What Grimm did know was that Reed was meeting Galliard at the memorial in the morning, right after some bullshit photo op speech the VP was given. Galliard's people were handling event logistics, which was why he'd be there. Grimm took it to the president, who didn't like the coincidence. She wanted to know what they were talking about, and that meant getting Sam on site for audio surveillance. And more, if necessary. All right, Grim. I'm in the camera booth. Now what? You need to sync the feed from the console to me so that I can see what we're getting. It should be easy to hack. Hang on. That's it. Now I need you to get comfortable with those camera controls. We're dealing with directional mics here, high end, but they're integrated with the camera focus. Get Reed and Galliard in the shot, and we'll get the audio. Miss them, and we get nothing. And here they come, now. shows you how much Sam changed that he would even think about going after Third Echelon. He'd been a company man, loyal to the bone. But now, here he was, ready to rip the guts out of the beast. The building's weakness was in the power supply. The main feed and primary backup ran through the basement parking garage. With a little C4 in the right places, Sam could cut the power to the building long enough to slip inside Third Echelon. That was good enough for Sam. He was going in, and he wanted them to know he was coming. Sam, are you in the garage? I smell like a spare tire. It was the best way. Now I need you to use the C4 you packed to take out the building's primary and secondary transformers. Do it simultaneously when you reach the front desk, and you'll have a short window before the emergency power puts security back online. They're both on the parking level, right? Right, but in two separate rooms. And don't be seen or they're gonna seal the security doors and you're done. And don't give those surveillance cameras a show. Sam, the one thing Third Echelon had always been about was the truth. Even after everything that happened, he'd held on to that. But now he was coming back as the hunter, as the enemy, as the one thing he'd never thought he'd be. And the truth, it was waiting for him.
I'm sorry. We're closing the office early for some routine maintenance. Please try again tomorrow. Thank you. I'm sorry, sir, but I'm afraid the office is closed for the evening. I'm here to see Tom Reed. Mr. Reed is currently unavailable. But if you'd like to make an appointment, Mr. Fisher, I used to work here. Security alert. Main power is offline. The emergency power will be online. Are you Fryman? Yeah. Yeah. You're Fisher, right? Anna told me that you were coming. I, I was a big fan of yours back when you worked here. I was a big fan. I'm touched. What do you have for me? I've got those. Ultra high frequency sonar goggles. Better than the stuff the new splinter cells are getting. Hey, try them on. Voila. With these babies, you can see in the dark. You can see through walls. You name it. It's not bad. Plus, I tweak them so that you can see the security system laser grid. Trip the beam, and a turret targets the brick. Nasty stuff. I programmed the algorithm. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, just one thing. Um, the top of the line guys are, are packing similar gear, so if you can see them, they, they might be able to see you. Thanks. Now you better get moving. Oh, I'll be fine. I'll, I'll just tell the security guards that I was reading in the can. You know, they'll walk me right back to my office. And you, on the other hand, it's... Good luck. So tell me about Sarah, Grimm. Tell me why you lied to me. It was Lambert's call, Sam. He thought he was no. protecting you. He had a recording system set up in his office. Everything that went on in there he saved. Before New York, he gave me the access codes. The files can only be triggered on site and only by me. This is what he had to say about Sarah. Sarah Fisher? I'd received reliable intelligence of a credible threat against her, one coming from a mole inside Third Echelon. The threat against Sarah would be used in an attempt to leverage Sam. Sam would then be compromised, and I couldn't allow that. So I made the hard choice. I faked Sarah's death, taking her off the playing board. Without her, Sam would be free to act as he needed to. He'd suffer, but she'd be safe. The rest was detailed. Preparing a new identity for Sarah, securing her. Excellent work there, Anna, and keeping her hidden. Then use that despicable creature, COVID, to provide a body that could stand in for the girl. And then I lied to my best friend. Told him his daughter was dead. Took advantage of his grief and used it for Third Echelon's purposes. And the saddest part of this, I never uncovered the mole. The danger to her and to Sam is still out there, which means this has to stay hidden. You and I, that's all. Perhaps someday... Sam! Sam! Sam, listen to me! Sam! What? have to listen to me. What's done is done. But right now, I need you. I need the Sam Fisher I worked with. Haven't you heard? He's dead! Just ask my daughter. Sam, please! My analysts have worked through the rest of the data that you got from White Box. We know what they're doing, and we can't stop it. Then what do you need me for? They've got three directional EMP generators in place. When they go off, the pulses will blanket the entire metro area. Optimal coverage pattern predictions place one of those three at the old city reservoir site. You need to go there and disable it. Why should I? Because that's the one that will hit Sarah's apartment. And if you stop it, you can save her from what's coming after. And the other two? There's only time to go after one. So go, save your daughter. I was never holding her. That was just a bluff to get you in the game. And for whatever it's worth, I'm sorry. What about you? I'm going to the White House with Tom Reed, and I'm going to try to save the president. 
Maybe I'll see you there. So now Sam knew everything. Knew that the best friend he'd murdered had betrayed him for the best reason in the world. Knew that the thing he'd helped Lambert build needed to be utterly destroyed. He was his own man now. And all his ties to his old life were gone. Except for Grim. She called me to call in a favor. It was too late to go for the other EMPs, but she did want me to go get Sarah. Sam deserved that much, at least. Meanwhile, she'd be at the White House doing whatever the hell she thought she could do there. So, I said yes. No way I was gonna leave Sarah down there for when the shit hit the fan. And I wasn't gonna abandon her father. Not even when he just waded in and started beating answers out of people. Then again, that was pure Sam. Pure Sam when he got mad. I don't know who you are, or what you're doing here, but thank you. They were going to... Save it. There's a weaponized EMP slung up a hundred yards from here. It's going to be activated tonight. Tell me how to stop You can't. There's two generators on site. When they're activated, they'll juice the EMP, and then it'll discharge. What's the catch? If you take out one generator, the other one automatically flashes. Each of them alone is enough to trigger the pulse. So I need to hit both at the same time. Yes. Or else it goes off. Are you with a friend? Otherwise, there's no way. There's always a way. Now, you better go. Things are going to get ugly around here. It's going to get ugly everywhere. Right about then, things started getting complicated. For some reason, Sarah was suspicious, but I'd managed to talk her into climbing into the chopper and had gone airborne to rendezvous with Sam. But there were too many moving parts for things to go smoothly, and Sam didn't know what he was really up against. Tagging the generators that fed the EMP so I could take them out from the air? That was the least of it. Sarah to get her out of danger. She's on board, and we're inbound. Dad? What's going on? Mr. Koss explained some of it, but I don't understand what... Just sit tight, sweetheart. It's gonna be all right. ETA is Sam, but I need the second generator. I need those coordinates. Nick. We're fucked. Got it? Hang I'm on. clear. Hey, Sam! How's that for time? Meg! Meg! Get us out of here! Weapons are hot. He's firing. Find yourself some cover. This is gonna get messy. Dad? Sarah. Sarah. But if I hear that Black Arrow radio chatter right, we are out of time! I'll let you sit next to him, but we gotta go! No! Everybody strapped in? Next stop, 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. Is Grim there? Last contact I had with her, she told me where to find Sarah. 
Then she said she was going in to stop Reed. I haven't heard from her since. We are going to help her, right, Dad? She looked out for me when you were gone. She could have just dumped me with a new name and walked away, and she didn't. And we are not going to walk away from her. Not now. No worries, kid. We're on our way. Just gonna take a while. Gotta make sure our flight path is in the EMP clear zone until the pulse hits. Oh my god. Jesus. Those things are supposed to be clean. All those people down there who don't know what happened. Reed, what the hell did you just do? Missile! Inbound! Sarah, hang on! I didn't think they'd have air defenses set up around the White House. I was wrong. RPGs are thorough that way. I get that impression. Sam! What the hell are you still doing here? Get your bony ass over to the White House. I'm not leaving my daughter here, Vic. Sarah, can you work your way around? Dad, it's all right. She'll be fine, Sam. We're six blocks from my office. My people are coming to meet us. Grim needs your help now. Grim can wait. I'm not taking any chances with Sarah. Dad, he's right. Go do what you have to do. Trust me, we'll be fine. I'll see you again soon, I promise. It was a bad day to work at the White House. Black Arrow's outer perimeter was there to prevent accidental witnesses. Then there was the inner cordon around the White House to make sure nobody bothered Reed while he did his dirty work. After all, the Army was eventually going to get its ass in gear and start airlifting people into the city. Then there was going to be some explaining to do. Reed's solution was brilliant. If the cavalry showed up after he'd taken out the president, then Black Arrow was there to help secure the White House and our new president. If not, Black Arrow would be the scapegoat, and their resistance would buy enough time for him to finish the job. What was going on inside the White House made the stuff in the streets look like a party. Reed's people were in there, not Black Arrow. And they were clearing it room by room. Reed had disabled most of the security from Third Echelon. The EMP had taken care of the rest. All the President had left was Secret Service. And they weren't enough. Sam was in, trying to make his way through the White House while the people he'd trained tried to kill him. As for Grimm, well, she had the hard part. By the time Grimm got a hold of Sam, Reed's men were kicking in the Oval Office door. She was there, and she could see that the President's protective detail was going down. The plan was for Sam to meet with Grimm in the press room where they'd figure out what the hell to do next. The 
course, Grim already had a plan, one she hadn't bothered to tell Sam about. But that shouldn't have surprised him. Some things, and some people, just don't change. Whatever it's worth, Sam, I am so sorry for everything. I thought we were in a hurry. Right. We need to get you close to Reed, and we need to do it in a way that doesn't make him double-tap the president immediately. Got any ideas? One. But it's gonna hurt. Just do what you have to do. I always do, Sam. I always do. <laughs> Tom? I've got Fisher. I'm bringing him in. Don't do anything drastic until I get there. Sorry, Sam. You're going to the Oval Office. You've got to dress properly for the occasion. Hands? You comfortable? Ah, fuck. Get up. You've got an appointment with the President. I was wondering when you were gonna get here. Nice work, Anna. I see you got some payback in for the stun he pulled at the airfield. Well, he put up a little bit of a fight. Of course he did. And now he's here, the famous Sam Fisher, just in time to be useful. So how does it feel, Sam, knowing you're gonna go down in history as the man who assassinated President Caldwell? Fuck you, Reed. Of course, we'll be just a little too late to rescue her. And you'll be shot multiple times trying to escape. It's classic, but it's clean. You don't honestly believe that this is gonna work. The surveillance camera's footage is gonna show. Your cameras, we own them. Your security measures, we made sure the Pulse fried them. We're third echelon, Madam President. We own every bit of information that goes through this town. And if I want to, I can make it look like you were assassinated by two circus clowns and a golden retriever. So shut up, and you might live a few seconds longer. <laughs> That's not third echelon. It's not Lambert's third echelon. Last time I checked, he was dead. And guess what? Third echelon nearly died with Tom. him. Tom. You see, the president decided the agency wasn't justifying its funding anymore. She was gonna shut us down, leave America vulnerable to the sort of attacks you spent so many years stopping, Sam. <laughs> Madam President, are you all right? Yes, I'm uh, fine, thank you. Son of a... Uh, that was a close You've got call. maybe two minutes before the army takes back the White House. Make them useful. How did Megiddo get to you? You don't want to know about Megiddo. You want to know about your daughter. You don't get to talk about my daughter. You still don't get it, do you? Sarah didn't matter. Threatening her was just a way to get to you. And leveraging you was a way to get to third echelon. And third echelon, that was a way to get what they wanted out of the White House. You're the mole. You're the one Lambert was worried about. Very good, Sam. You finally see. You son of a bitch! You cost me three years of my life. Three years when I thought my daughter was dead. Move! Move! Drop your weapon on the floor now! Captain, thank you for rescuing me. Now, I don't see anyone else here but us, and I'm sure you don't either. Oh, man. Let's get you out of here. Thank you. Oval Office is secure. We have the President. POTUS is safe and secure. I've talked to Sam once since he left. He told me that he and Sarah were gonna take some time to catch up. He talked about learning who was really important to you, why you always had to come back for him. He talked about family.
And you know what the last thing he said to me was just before he hung up? Vicky said, thanks for everything. I love you like a brother. Brother, that's family, right? I thought so.
He's leaving out the part where you're headed in the country to Miramar. Well, yeah, uh, but that was later. All we did there was take out the third-ranking general and the ruling hunter and prevent the cross-border incursion into Laos. At King Lap. Right, right, King Lap. The river crossing. Biggest damn catfish I've ever seen. <laughs> Details. The important stuff is what happened in Pattaya. You have to tell the story every damn time. Every chance I get. Anyway, we're in this bar pretending to be tourists. When this guy comes up to us, worst job of reading people I've ever seen in my life, because he figured Sam was a sucker. Most people do. He lived. That makes him unique. Yeah, yeah, whatever. So, this guy, he walks up to Sam, sizes an amount, and asks him if he wants to buy an elephant. A full-grown elephant. Yeah, like, that makes a difference. The guy tries to sell Sam an elephant. And Sam here, he's got this look on his face like he doesn't know what to do. First time I've ever seen him like that. I was trying to figure out how to tell Sarah that she couldn't have an elephant. So Sam finally turns to him and says, Sorry, I already got one. Cool as ice, just like that. And the guy, <laughs> he believes him. It was either that or break his arm. I like to think I made the right decision. <laughs>